Speedway on Grass. Big crowd at Silverstone to watch it, including our Murray Walker. A new, longer, faster, demanding circuit for 20 of the sport's top riders, including British Masters winner Simon Wigg, Trevor Banks, American Bobby Schwartz, the young sensation of 1983 Simon Cross, and last year's winner Martin Hagen. I think it's going to be a very close meeting. The track, I think, will suit me, and uh, also Simon Wigg, but I think it's going to be a very good meeting, and hopefully I'll meet Simon in my first race, so I think we might have some indication of how the meeting's going to go. Bobby, very much a lead man in Speedway, but uh, how experienced are you with the grass track? Well, Marie, actually, I'm not very experienced at all. This is really my first British appearance. I've ridden on the continent very, uh, a few times, I should say, and uh, I've done well in some, but this, this is a tricky circuit today. What are the differences between Speedway technique and grass track? Well, actually, you use your foot for balance in Speedway, and here you just dabble it down. You just dab it a little bit. You can't really put your foot on the ground and slide along. You just sort of have to dab it pick it up and it's hard to learn to unlearn you know what you've yeah. learned in speedway to come here and just sort of not slide your foot along you have to just dab it and it's tough because it catches in the ruts and such and it's, it's a different game the first of nine heats six riders and they include simon wick hegan wilmot trevor banks robert goldman and roland Tebbs. And it's Simon Wig, the expected leader, who goes straight up to the front. Watch number two. But Simon Wig looks as though he's in trouble already. He's in second place. And in the lead, it's Sean Wilmot, number three. That's the man from Woolsbridge, Hackney Speedway. And he's leading Wig. Banks in second position. Then it's Hagen, Martin Hagen, the reigning champion in fourth place. Now there are six points for a winner, down to one point for sixth place, and the points accumulate, and at the end of the meeting, it is the man with the most points, irrespective of position, who is the overall winner. So, now, where is Martin Hagen? The answer is further back, because there, out in front, as you see, number three is Sean Wilmot in the red helmet, producing on that machine of his over 50 brake horsepower into the last lap now round the top bend streaking away in second position it's martin hagen look for gp on his number plate and there it is martin hagen looks as though he's in line for five points as away goes wilmot and that's six points for sean wilmot for victory five points for martin hagen second place Four points to Simon Wig, third position, and Trevor Banks gets three points for his fourth place. But now it's the second of the nine heats. It includes Bobby Schwartz, Gerald Short, and Kelvin Tatum. And up to the first corner, the long left-hander, it is Kelvin Tatum that goes into the lead, the man from Horsham. And down go Keith Millard and Robert Price. And Bobby Schwartz clips Millard's rear wheel. Millard slews sideways straight into Price, both out but Bobby Schwartz rides on. And there in the lead is Kelvin Tatum. He's ahead of Schwartz now in second place, number eight, and very close to him. Then Gerald Short, and there he is in the distinctive yellow leathers and the yellow helmet. It's a close thing into the last lap. Tatum leads, Short second, and Mark Edwards in third position. And it looks as though it's going to be Kelvin Tatum's race, the Wimbledon Speedway rider. He's using all his Speedway knowledge to get the maximum of this grass track here at Silverstone. He's doing it well. He wins the race. Kelvin Tatum, then, is the winner. And you can see that he's making the most of his performance as he really slides it round the corner. Chased very hard indeed. Short second and Mark Edwards in third position. So there is Kelvin Tatum riding out of the circuit into the paddock and this is heat three of nine nearest the camera, Phil Collins. Then in the red helmet, Simon Cross, 18 years old and that's the man to watch. Indeed, Simon Cross is now well up at the front, he is in the lead. Duncan Tolhurst on the right, number 16 in second place. Then Mike Beaumont is right with him. Look at this sliding absolutely together but Simon Cross who is a mere 18 years old schoolboy champion twice rides for Crazy, second in the 1983 British Championship and look at the way he's going now but he's not going well enough because ahead of him is Duncan Tolhurst that's number 16 the man from Staplehurst the man who is ex 
350 and 500 centre champion and he's putting it across Simon Cross at the moment with and it looks to me as though they're coming up for the last lap now in this four lap race and Simon Cross is challenging, he's going to try and go round the outside of Colhurst and he does it, he just needs on the machine. Round the bend, he's got it into a full slide now. Tolhurst really winds things up, but Simon Cross has only got to hold his line very, very tight indeed as he goes round the left-hander, down the finishing straight, across the line, and Simon Cross has got a maximum of six points. In second position, Tolhurst on five, and then Mike Beaumont gets four points as Simon Cross rides out into the paddock. And there's Simon Cross out again. Heat six out of nine. Behind him is Robert Price plus Trevor Banks. Now, let's see how Cross gets away here. Well, he's in second place. Now he's in the lead already. Simon Cross, no, behind him. Yes, Simon Cross is through. He's on the inside line. Now he can straighten up the machine and really accelerate away. He's racing Robert Price, number seven, in third position. Behind them is Mike Beaumont. Then it's Trevor Banks. One, two, three, four. It's about just over two seconds between the first and fourth. And it looks to me as though number seven, Rob Price from Rawns in Northamptonshire, is catching, is catching Simon Cross. Let's watch. Now look at that for style. You've really got to be very, very strong. And Simon Cross is showing his class. He is pulling away now from Robert Price. Beaumont is still in third position. Banks is still in fourth place. And you've got to hang on to the machine. There is a rear suspension and a front suspension. Very limited movement. There's over 50 horsepower from these engines. They are into the last lap now. There is a footrest on the right. A two-speed gearbox, a trigger control, and there goes Simon Cross for getting it on full lock. An absolutely terrific slide. Now he's out of the last bend. Now he's into the finishing straight, and he's over the line to win for the second time, a maximum of 12 points. There is Collins and Tatum. This is heat nine, the last of the nine heats, which lead up to the two semi-finals. And Sean Wilmot is there. Sean Wilmot is leading. Simon Cross is in this heat, but he's had a very bad start. He's in only fourth position. But he's going through on the inside, and Cross is already closing up in one move. He's gone up from fourth to second place. Sean Wilmot, number three leading. There behind him, 14, Simon Cross. With the two of them, Kelvin Tatum, number nine, first, second, and third. Now, it's going to be a battle between these three for the rest of this heat. And don't forget that Simon Cross has won both the heats in which he has already ridden. And here he is in second place. It's still Wilmot leading. And now Cross is through. Simon Cross with a back down. Down goes Tatum. Kelvin Tatum is off his machine. And it looks to me as though he's perfectly all right. He's going, his machine is being wheeled away. Tatum walks away. And there in the background is Simon Cross. He is almost home now at the end of another four laps. And if he wins this race, and it looks very likely indeed, because Sean Wilmot is some way behind him, and there's a great wheelie from Cross. He has won for the third time in three races. That is a maximum of 18 points, and Wilmot second on 13. And away now. This is a runoff for the last semi-final place. And in it, Peter Lloyd and Mark Edwards are the men to watch. Number 17, number 12, and they're out in front. One corner completed, into the top left-hander, and it's Peter Lloyd who is leading. A battle now as they go, and Edwards, Mark Edwards and Bob Dolman are closing up, but it's Robert Price leading. Peter Lloyd is in second place. Now, look at this. This is absolutely critical for these four riders. One of them, and only one of them, is going to take the 12th place to qualify for one of the two semi-finals. And it's Peter Lloyd leading. But, round up with him, comes Robert Price. Watch number 17 and number 7. Peter Lloyd is the man to watch. 17. And they're into the last lap, and Price is making a terrific challenge. Lloyd has got the inside line. Price trips out very wide, and surely Lloyd must win. This is the last corner. They accelerate away. They're coming out of it now, and they're absolutely together. But it is Lloyd. He nearly goes down. Peter Lloyd's going to do it. 
Price runs very wide indeed. He's lost time and distance. And sure enough, Peter Lloyd qualifies. So now for the two semi-finals. Simon Cross leads with three wins. Martin Hagen just one point behind. And Sean Wilmot third. 17, Peter Lloyd, the last of the qualifiers. And number two, British Masters winner, Simon Wig. 11, Keith Millard. And 16, Duncan Tolhurst. Simon Cross there. And number four is Trevor Banks. And now it's go for the first semi-final. Four laps, six riders, all action, and Trevor Banks leads. He's on 20 points. Behind him, Simon Week on 19 points. And then Simon Cross, he's leading on aggregate with 22 points, but he's in only third position in this race. Is there going to be a change? Is Trevor Banks, number four, the man from Folkestone, Three times British champion going to take this heat. Well, Simon Weeks is challenging. Simon Cross is still in there in third position. But 27-year-old Trevor Banks on the Westlake Power Dueler machine has got the ascendancy. And then some. Look at him go. It's Bill, Banks, Wig, and Simon Cross. Six points for victory. Five per second. Third for fourth position, and Banks, unless he has trouble, on the remaining part of the last lap, which he's on now, is on target for those six vital points. Simon Wig there, the British Masters champion, can do no better than second, and he's in second position. Trevor Banks, number four, has won, and Simon Cross takes third position. Well, there are the points then for the first the semi-final there Mike Beaumont number 13 is Phil Collins just checking his machine number 9 is Kelvin Tatum number 10 the man who finished high in the European Championship Gerald Short then Sean Wilmot who's done well already today and finally the reigning champion GP Martin Hagen now Martin Hagen has got to do well in this semi-final if he is to retain his British Championship for 1983 here at Silverstone. And my goodness, he's doing it. He's gone down the straight, into the first left-hander, into the lead, and he really means business. His machine produces 56 brake horsepower. He's the son of the great Alf Hagen. He's got years of cross-track experience behind him. A man from London, the reigning champion, and he is on his way. Martin Hagen leads. Helmut Tatum is second. Gerald Short is in third position. But yes, Sean Wilmot is now up into third. There's the man in the red helmet. Sean Wilmot, number three, on the Dula Wesley. And there's Hagen. Look at him fighting the machine round. And if you give it just a whisker, too much throttle, you can lose the bike altogether. Then it's head over heels out of the race. But it doesn't look as though Hagen's going to do that. He's on his last lap. He's leading. Tatum is in second position. Sean Wilmot is in third. And just watch now, Martin Hagen. The leader. The winner over the line. Hagen, Tatum, Wilmot. Hagen on 23 points leads overall. Tatum 17.6th overall. And Sean Wilmot third equal with Trevor Banks on 20 points. And now it's final time. Six of the fastest of the day for another four laps. Martin Hagen, is he going to be British champion again? Well, there is Simon Wig, the reigning British Masters rider. There is Trevor Banks, and number nine is Kelvin Tatum. GP is Martin Hagen, and three is Sean Wilmot. There, number 14, was Simon Cross. There they go. Now, what Wig? He fairly streaks away. Who's going to be first into the first corner? Answer. Number 14, Simon Cross. Second is Simon Wig, who's going through and taking the lead with a tighter line. Yes, it's Wig, using those 50-plus horsepower to the maximum, trying to keep ahead of Simon Cross. Wig is desperately after the six points for victory. Simon Cross is on target for five points at the present moment, and behind him it's Sean Wilmot. So, Wig, Cross, Wilmot, and they're pulling away from Hagen, Tatum and Banks, and Martin Hagen, 
the reigning champion is in real trouble. He's got an engine misfire, his machine is slowing, he's got no hope of doing well in the final, but now it's Simon Cross, he's in the lead, he's taken Simon Wig. So Cross, with victories behind him, second place overall up to now, it looks as though as he goes into the last lap, he's going to add six points to his total of 22 so far. And it looks to me, too, as though this is going to be a race record time. One minute, 20.4 is the record so far. And what beautiful style Simon Cross has got. He's got the machine under superb control, looks over his shoulder. He is safe. Simon Wig is in second place, and this is a new record. One minute, 20.3. Cross, Wig and Wilmot, and Cross leads overall with 28 points. But with Wig, Wilmot and Hagen tying on 24 points, there's a runoff for second, third and fourth. And there's Sean Wilmot, number three, GP, Martin Hagen, and number two, Simon Wig. Well, who's going to be second? Away they go. Wilmot's got a superb start. In fact, he's into the corner first. Simon Wig is right behind him. Martin Hagen is only in third position at the moment, but he has corrected the ignition trouble that he had with his engine in the final. It doesn't look to me as though he's going to be able to catch Sean Wilmot, but he might just get past Simon Wig. Let's watch. And he's very close. There's Sean Wilmot leading. Number three, it looks as though second place overall is his. GP, Martin Hagen challenging. He doesn't want to finish as low down as he would have done in fourth position. Is he going to take third place? There's Wilmot. And it's still weak second and Hagen goes through and down goes Simon Wig. Wig suddenly sees Hagen broad sliding across his path. He's unsighted. He slides safely off but out of contention down to fourth place overall and on goes the battle between Sean Wilmot and Hagen into the last bend this is the battle for second place and Sean Wilmot wheelies across the line to take it so Sean Wilmot second Martin Hagen is third but the overall winner Simon Cross well you're not only the champion but you're the youngest champion now what, what's the future hold for you speedway or grass track well both hopefully yeah, I just want to do my best, you know, in everything I do. What about the rest of, of this year? Um, well, um, I've been uh, riding for Cradley and Weymouth full-time until the end of the season. Um, I don't think I've got many grass tracks left through the season now. Um, I just hope to do my best, you know. Have you got any more needle matches against Simon Wigg and the others in the rest of the year? Um, Yes, I think the Ace of Aces, the last meet in the year, I'll be against him. Um, but I'll be riding the same team at Crady, you know. So uh, we're sort of brothers. <laughs> well, you'll have, you, you'll have a lot of followers after what you've done today. Congratulations and all the best for the future. Okay, thanks very much. Victory overall then for Simon Cross with Sean Wilmot second, Hagen third, Simon Week fourth, Trevor Banks fifth and Kelvin Tatum sixth. A good day's truly spectacular solo grass track racing.